You're watching, old mates. Backyard Tech. Alrighty. The Yamaha O2R. It's actually a really good digital recording console, or DRC. As we know, there are two variants. There's the variant I have, which is the 48K, and then there's the 96K variant as well. Now, being Yamaha, they're actually technically could be classed a hybrid mixer. They can do analog out, and they can do ADAT out. And this video particularly is around ADAT. Now, there are varying opinions about ADAT. I have my opinions. I'll share them with you in this video. But I do have a reason behind this old mate's Q&A and advice video. A couple of days ago, I got a comment from a viewer from a video I did four years ago or more now regarding the O2R. This viewer has an HD24, which I am assuming is an Elisa's HD24. And they're trying to get the two units to talk using ADAT. However, no bueno. System says no. And they're getting aggravated. And I can understand that. The only problem we've got in this whole scenario with this video, and as much as I'm going to try and help the viewer out, I've never used an HD24. Now, we all know what they are. Okay, if you watch Old Mates Backyard Tech, you know what a HD24 is. All the holier-than-thou experts do as well. My experience with ADAT is SVHS. But technically, the principles are effectively the same. Now, the O2R does have sometimes a routing nightmare, which is why I run the O2R in the analog realm. Because I know that the routing on that can sometimes be an absolute SH-110. If you get it wrong, well, you, you're up the creek. So, for this old mate's Q&A and advice video, I'm going to try and offer the viewers some advice on how to get around these issues with the HD24 and the O2R. Sort of, well, having arguments. You got questions about some IT stuff. You got questions about AV stuff. You got questions about the 80 series Land Cruiser? You're at the right spot. From Old Mates Backyard Tech, this is Old Mates Q&A and Advice. G'day everyone, thank you for tuning in. It is Old Mates Q&A and Advice time here at Old Mates Backyard Tech combined with a pro audio video. And this viewer is getting, well, aggravated. And I can understand it, trust me, I can understand it. So the, view, the video I did was a Q&A and advice video and the Alesis ADAT XT20. Now, right off the meat of the bat, I know there are varying opinions around ADAT, all right? There are many recording engineers and mixing engineers who say they're fine with it. I am. There's others there who say it is not, or it was nothing other than a real nightmare. The biggest issue you would often have with ADAT would be you could get two of them to sync up pretty easily. There's 16 tracks. Three of them, yeah, you had started having trouble. Four of them, and you could throw the mix out by over a second or two. They just would have massive syncing issues. And I get that. But my personal experience with Elisis and ADAT has been good. I have managed to, to not have a problem be it with the XT20 or the M20, you know, the big, the big rack mounted one. So this is from Jay Dragon. Uh, I have an O2R and an HD24. I cannot get the two set up to communicate properly. So far, I can only record plugging into the, plugging into the HD24. I spent countless hours with the routing uh, to no avail. I cannot get a signal to the HD24 by plugging it into the O2R. I have three ADAT cards in the O2R in slots one, three, and four. Okay. Now, assuming the viewer has the 48K model, all right? So I reply back. Um, then they go on to say, I've made some progress. I was able to plug a mic in on channel 5 and get it to come out on channel 17 on the HD24. I've saved the settings in a test scene memory so I can go back to it and see how it's set. Uh, I must have spent over 30 hours trying to get this straightened out 
through different combinations of settings and am burnt out. And that's not surprising. Uh, it is not the equipment. I am sure it's a routing problem by the operator. I can't mention who that is. Okay. So I get it. The O2R's routing can be a massive issue. All right. I know for a fact that, like I said, there are some engineers out there who despise the ADAT system out of a leases. Be it the DB25 to XLR, or be it the um, fiber. Now, I need to differentiate that from Maddie. Okay. Um, I don't have I my ADAT cards on the back of my machine are DB25 to XLR. Okay. I only have one. The issue I have with mine is the fact that with the screen dead, it's very hard to see the routing tables. What I would suggest you do, J Dragon, um, for troubleshooting things, you've said you've set up a test scene within the scene memory, and that's a good place to start. My theory is it may not necessarily be the Yamaha. It could be the cards. What I suggest you do, and I know, look, Spending over 30 hours trying to get the routing right is, is painful. Although I find a little hard that if you're going out on channel 5 and coming back on channel 17, that tells me that it's the two of them are not talking properly. Now, when I've used the XT20, which is, is my ADAT experience, so Alesis tape, it's a DTRS system. All right, I know people are going to be like, Oh, bloody mag tape. Deal with it. Okay, I'm an analog person. A um, couple of things you can try. One, make sure your times are right, your TODs are right. Secondly, check your sample frequencies on the HD24. If you've got the O2R running at 48K and you've got the HD at 96, it's not going to work. Okay, check your sample frequencies. The other option is take out all bar one card. I know this is going to annoy you. Take out all bar one card. Make sure, okay, when you do have your tape returns on. All right. Now, unfortunately, I don't have the video camera with me. But on the O2R, assuming it's the 48K model, mate, and it's the same one as, as I've got, your tapes, route them so that channel one on the tape equals channel one on the HD24. And when you play it back, play it back through the same channel. If that works, then you'll probably find it's a card routing issue rather than the O2R in itself. Now, my O2R, as we know, is in the analog realm because I don't have an XT220. I don't have um, um, a WC for it. Also, J Dragon, if you are running a WC setup and it's out of sync and the HC24 is out of sync, that's going to cause problems everywhere. So what I suggest you do rip out all by one card, set up another test scene, and try and get them to fire back on the track you recorded them on. So for example, with your tape route, route it out on channel one, try and get it to play back on channel one. All right? The issue with the HD24 is I don't know about them. All right? I do know about the XT20s because I've used them. I know people are going to be rolling their eyes. Why would he use mag tape? I mean, come on. Because I had better luck with Alesis than I did with Tascam. Now, we all know that the DAs were high eight. I hated them. Didn't like the sound of them. All right. Which is why I prefer the XT20. I think it sounds better. So what I'd be inclined to do, J-Dragon, rip out 
cards three and four, all right, pull them out, all right? Just use one card. Test that card through those slots. If you find out that it's not it, it, you've got a problem with the routing on the card, it could be you've got a faulty card as well. So with the O2R, we know we have stacks of scenes, all right? Buttload of scenes you can pick from. That's common knowledge. I think the 96 has the same thing. But with specifically with the version I'm running, I know you've set up a test scene and that's a great idea. But what I'd try and do is try and get, try and record out on channel one, try and bring it back in on channel one. See if you can get the two to line up. That's not the greatest way of doing it, but if you can get the two to line up, you might be able to then say, okay, route channel one back through channel, or as you said, channel 17 if necessary. With your tape, um, with your tape 1 to 16, say, and also make sure your flip's not enabled too because that can really muck you up. With your tape on, okay, the reason I say bring back the channel it went out on is because then you can try troubleshooting down the line to find out where your routing problem is falling apart. Okay, use an analog type scenario see when i was recording all right let's just say i was going out to a 16 channel a 16 track machine so in mag tape so analog that'd be you know one inch one inch 16 track okay um if you were using dtrs it'd be two eight tracks right because both the high eight task cam unit and of course the XT20 releases unit used video tape. High eight for the for the DAs and SVHS, specifically SVHS for the XT20. And what I would actually do with those two machines is if I did have an issue with, with channel alignment, I'd try and line the channels up with record and the channels back with playback. So, J Dragon, here's a suggestion. Rip out all by one card. Arm eight, eight tracks. Okay? Just eight. Record out, and then try and bring them back in on the same track you went out on, and just turn off your, your routing. That might give you an idea of where things are starting to fall over. Okay? I know it's a pain, but if you test out your card slots, because you also may find... Cards, you know, slot. it might work on card slot one, but slots three and four are having a bit of an argument with each other, or you've got a an interrupt issue. Now, if you've got an interrupt issue, you're up SH1T Creek. That's probably the best suggestion I can give you, all right? The issue I have is, as you guys know, my Yamaha is running in the analog realm because I don't have any DA interface for it, right? It comes out digitally, well, technically, no, it comes out analog to the main PC and it comes out, the monitor digital goes in straight into the amp. So they're, they're really your only options, Jay Dragon. I'm sorry I can't help you more because I don't have that, that ability, unfortunately. Um, but there, there's some other things you can work on, mate. Um, can I just say also, I've seen some videos about um, engineers and, and recording and mixing engineers howling on the ADAT system. And I, I get it. Okay, I, I understand. All right. You know, I'm not one of these people to howl on someone else. I'm like, I get howled on. But can I just say this? The times I've used ADAT be it from a mixer to a XT20, I've never had a problem. Now, I admit, you know, two machines, it's all right. Three machines, you might have a bit of a sinking issue. Four machines, yeah, okay, fine. If you're going to have problems with four machines, getting them all to sync up, I get it, okay? But personally, my experience with ADAT 
has been far better than that of Tash Cam. I would sooner run a Alesis ADAT than I would any other type of, of, of platform back in those days. Even going with an HD24 if I have to. I have not had a problem. I get where a lot of people are coming from saying, you know, getting the machines to sync up and stay in sync and five, six, seven, eight other things. I get it. But I've done to three machines and I haven't had a problem. They've stayed in sync perfectly. Maybe four machines you might have a trouble. Five machines you might have a trouble. Yeah, okay, I get it. You know, obviously four machines gives you 32 channels. So you've got a 32 channel mixer, you've got 32 channels of SVHS tape or, or Hi8 tape if you're going to be using a DA. Um, 38 or 88, it doesn't matter. But personally for me, I've never had a problem with the ADAT. And actually, in my own opinion, for my years, I think I, the ADAT system sounded far better than the DA. I know I'm going to get held on. I've, I've, I've offered up an opinion. And we all know in this woke environment we're in, you can't hold up, you can't offer up an opinion because you'll offend ninety eight percent of the people. But I don't have a problem with ADA. Given half a chance here, I would run a couple of XT two twenties. So XT twenties, I, I would. The XT twenty is a beautiful machine. I don't know why why I've got two twenty on the brain. XT20. But J Dragon, try that, mate. That that's probably the best the best I can offer you is run them down the line, find your routing table, and then figure out from there. Um I always sequentially record it. Okay, so sequential record, sequential playback. So if it went out on track one, I bought it in back in on channel one. If it went out on chat. If it went out track six, I bought it back on channel six. Okay. That's just how I did things. Is that the right way of doing it? Probably not. Did it work for me? Yes. Watch me get held on for that comment. I did something that's not right, but it worked for me. Well, hell's going to break loose, isn't it? Watch the comments on this. But anyway, J Dragon, that's the best I can give you, mate. Other than that, if you need some more help, Contact me via email. Um, I may be able to help you out a little bit more. The biggest problem I've got with my O2R is without the screen working anymore. Uh, yeah. Makes it a little loud, doesn't it? Um, the, the other thing is, if it's the 96K model, so it's the O2R after mine, I can't help you because I haven't got one. I don't even know them. They look different. They run different to the one I've got. They're, they're a different beast entirely. So I really I can't help you with that, unfortunately. But there we go. Hopefully that helps the viewer out. Stick around. Up next, we're getting into something old mate really loves. Harrison's Mixbus 32C. That's next. <laughs> <laughs> 